Okay, folks, we got us a 03 to 06 or 07 classic, even. Uh, I didn't even ask to see what kind of truck this came out of because these are basically all the same. Same problems all the time. We got it hooked up to uh, it's uh, anything, any truck chassis the GM built between 03 to 06 and the classic 07s. So uh, this works on any of them. Power it up and see what we get initially. We have no Prindle, and I didn't really see the gauge gauges reset either. I heard one or two of them trying, but they don't look like they got good movement. So probably looking at stepper motors. Lighting looked weak. go through this whole thing where you all see all the repairs we do to them and um, get her back up on our feet stand by okay get this thing off I uh, saw a guy doing a trick the other day he just like Normally, I get in here with a screwdriver and I release these clips. He says, and we'll give this theory a shot here, that if you just push down, it pops off. Sure shit, it does. All right. Well, I learned something new. Hopefully, you did. Thanks to Jeff something or another. Hopefully he, uh, don't look at my channel and get mad because I couldn't remember his channel name. I don't really see a whole lot of difference in, in technique and taking them off, but hey, whatever floats your boat, it was kind of, it was a little bit easier maybe. All right, we got some crusties. That is... It almost looks, that really doesn't look like flux that nobody got off because it doesn't look like anybody screwed with it, but it looks like it has had water in it and uh, corroded some stuff. So, this one is going to need a little cleanup. It's got the original stepper motors, original lighting. So, I guess we get. <laughs> We'll just get going on it. I got the hiccups. Y'all got any good theories on getting rid of hiccups? Used to know this girl that uh, would come up and give you a big old kiss if you had the hiccups, and sure enough, that made it go away. I don't know if I was just shocked by that or what the deal was, but uh, it damn sure made the hiccups go away. All right, to get these stepper motors off, solder sucker. Use your solder and iron to heat up that solder, and then you just suck it off of there with your solder sucker. This is the quickest way. We got some fancy equipment. I reserve that for stuff that's gonna be a little harder than this. That's pretty easy stuff here. You want to have a good solder sucker. This one's actually this one's a really good one, and it has lasted forever. And uh, it's older than dirt. And it was cheap. I think it was like an eBay special for like three ninety nine. So it's a good deal. You get a tool that lasts a long time for cheap money. You want to make sure you get the solder off there good. Um, if you don't, these motors will try to hang up. 
if you get it off good you should be able to just press on these little white pins that come through the board and the motor will release that one just fell out um, and another one just fell out and uh, if you don't and they hang up redo your desoldering work because you missed something uh, there we go and this is what you do with your old stepper motors good for nothing all right it's the best time to get your lighting off yes yeah, somebody something's going on here because normally these are just snap right off and these are on solid as solid solid as can get so they'll still come off of there but we're gonna have to use the soldering iron to get them off looks like somebody's been in here there's crusty's here maybe this is old flux that just about has to be old flux so that's what happens when you don't get your flux off later on it looks like rust it, uh, sometimes it'll eat into things you don't want it eating into anything get this stuff out of the way and we'll start cleaning everything up Try a little 99% alcohol and swab. Let's see if we can get this crap off of here. It's pretty crusty, so I may have to do a little more scraping than I normally do. Let's see if I can find a, find a toothbrush. Maybe that'll work a little better. me all the time what kind of solder I use. I don't know, it's on a roll. I know it's 60-40. I don't know the diameter because I got this weird setup where it uh, spools off on a roll and it's uh, encased in, a, in an area that's hard to get to. So about once a year I have to put a new roll up there. And at that point I can tell you what diameter I use. But uh, all I know is it's about that thick. Now if you've got a big old solder, a big old strand of solder that's big and thick, chances are pretty high you're going to have something like this go on because there's a lot more resin in those and so let me show you what I'm talking about. If I can find my big solder. Well, and I can't. It's probably out in the shop because that's the only place I could ever use it. But it's about a half as big as my pinky. <laughs> and um, there's a lot of a lot of flux inside of that 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 one. It needs to needs to be a lot of flux inside of it you're doing bigger stuff on the smaller stuff not so much so got all the crusties off of here let's get some other swab get some other couple of swabs here I'll go with this double time with two of them
All right. It's still not very pretty. cluster is not coming on. Typically these three resistors right here have a problem. This cluster was, was powering up. It just yeah, see how I hit that one side and the whole thing turned loose? It's because it wasn't attached on the other side. Place back on there. tried to do the same thing so this power supply area was I call it a power supply but it's just part of what supplies power and it's not technically a power supply I guess maybe technically it is just not in the format of like a power supply for a computer or anything Everything's right out here on the board. Uh, you know what? I should probably show y'all. So that Prindle was dead. push on these resistors here see how it came back to life it makes a little better connection so these resistors go to this odometer section here the ones right above the speedometer go to the odometer the prindle is this section over here and we are going to resolder all of that Attached. <laughs> How short a solder can you use? Without burning your fingers. Oh! Well, my roll of solder is behind my camera. As you guys just bared witness to. <laughs> Get this thing fixed here. <laughs> 
bull in a china closet. Alright, now maybe it won't burn my fingers anymore. Okay, you'll want to hit those. You'll hit these two over here. There's a couple up here you want to hit. Uh, you want to hit this one over here. Typical failure points. Alright, so next thing we want to do is while our stepper motors are off, we're going to put our lighting on. You want to add a little solder to each of your pads. If you notice when you're taking those lights off, they have four pads, but only two of them are being used. You can usually see where the bulb turned loose. And just use those same two pads. However, if you don't, come back and reference this video. And your points are here and here. So the, the highest one and the lowest one. 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 And oops, I didn't pre do these two. On that particular point, your bulb points are top left and lower right, and exactly the opposite, top right and lower left on the other side. And they are the left and right points there, the top and bottom point here, um, they are the top and bottom point there. And I didn't cut any of my bulbs, so they're not prepared. And I guarantee you guys don't want to sit here and watch me cut bulbs. Anyway, cutting bulbs amounts to they come with an extra long little leads. Cutting bulbs, that's all there is to it. And then spread the legs. And then you're ready to solder them on. Just solder one leg to each of those. And, um, I'll hit pause and cut the rest of these so you don't have to watch that. Okay, got my legs cut. I'm ready to start soldering bulbs. This is the hardest one to get on because they don't leave you any room for your fat fingers. Guess they didn't plan on us being in here in the first place. Be careful when you're soldering these on. Do not let that leg, if it's a little long, touch any of your other components. You just want it on the pad itself. With that, see if we can get a good shot of that. I don't know. That's about the right length of your legs. That is a, I don't know, a couple millimeters. Our fixed cluster is like uh, old grandma's bake, you know, I can't, can't tell you exactly what the ingredients are, but I can show you. <laughs> I 
about this much of that and about this much of this. Doesn't matter if your legs overlap a little bit, as long as they're not touching any other components, you're good. So here, I'm going to do it on purpose here. There's not going to be any foul. I'm going to show you what not to do. Alright. That one right there, that leg extends over and touches on those resistors. You don't want that. putting LEDs on instead of bulbs polarity matters so there is a positive and a negative lead on here and you want to ascertain that with a multimeter or you can, if you have a bench power supply it's as easy as powering it up take it an LED that's pre-cut also legs bent over and you can touch your LED if it comes on it's wrong or right if it doesn't so there you go there's a right polarity all right and you can solder LEDs on instead of bulbs you do not solder with the power applied to the board though it's really bad practice things are short out We'll be looking for a new board. All right, let's get some new stepper motors. All right, new steppers. Line up the pogo or the the, the little prongs on the back. We all remember that from kindergarten. The big peg goes in a big hole. The little peg goes in a little hole. I think they were just round and square holes in kindergarten, but nonetheless you get the point. They only go in here one way. All your legs go through the holes, turn your board over, get the solder. It doesn't take much time on each of these. Um, if you didn't get your hole cleaned out before you stuck those through and that leg pushed one of these little pads off, take that stepper motor back out, clean your holes, and don't start trying to just solder the way it is, okay? Because uh, I see that a lot. Then we have a broken trace at the end of the day that we have to fix. And um, that's probably the number one failure point that people have is breaking these traces back here. Either, and it's two, one of two things. It's either pushing stepper motors through occluded holes or it is too much heat, too much dwell time, and these pads turn loose. And you get too rough with the board. And man, I have had a ton of these with uh, dendritic growth lately. Seems like every one that I have had has had dendritic growth. And this one has absolutely none. We see dendritic growth around here. Looks like a little moldy stuff growing. But I'm uh, not going to be able to show you how to get rid of that today because there isn't any. 
All right. Everything's soldered back together. We'll do a visual inspection, make sure everything looks good. You can check these with a the multimeter when you're done. There are test points for each and every one of the pins that go back here uh, that you're soldering. You just want to set your meter to continuity. When it's on continuity and it makes a connection, it will beep. All right, so there's test points adjacent to all of these pins. These up here, a little more difficult. You've got to find the test point associated with the pin. And it's been a long time since I did this, so bear with me. There it is. This one is here, and this one is up here somewhere. And this one is right here. Okay. First 50 of these I did, I guess. I tested every connection I made, etc. And then as I've done hundreds and hundreds more, the only thing that's going to happen is you're going to have to take it apart when it don't work and figure out what you did wrong. But that is pretty damn rare these days. Make sure your bulbs are pointing straight up so it hits the prisms. And we are good to go back together. So you want your backing plate on first. You want to put your face plate on next. This one, the lens was all broke, so this face plate is placed at this foot. Ah, easy for you to say. This face plate it was really dirty, so I'm going to clean it. Pretty faded to you. It's got the light faces. It makes it go faster. All right. Easy money if you've got a power supply. Power to bed way up. Your needles on the zero position, just set those needles back down on those shafts. Except for your gas gauge, you want just a hair width below the empty. You want to get that spot where you know I'm not just empty, I am out. Nobody likes their gas gauge to be like showing empty except for the fact that you are out out. So in a perfect world I guess empty's empty and, and everything, but uh, that's not the way we operate. We operate as it's empty, it'll go another 10 miles. So uh, you want it a little bit below empty. Because you know people are gonna do that. Stand by a second and I'll get a new, uh, we gotta get a new lens for this and we'll get that out. Yeah. Brand new lens in the box. Let's see if I can use a razor blade without cutting my arm off. And I love doing stuff. Bubble wrapped, and protective plastic. New stuff is just the best. These come with a uh, blue hue to them because they've got this plastic over the top. It has to be peeled off to protect it during shipping because 
I'm not sure. If it gets through the bubble wrap and it gets through the other plastic layer, well, actually, it has to get through the box first, then the bubble wrap, then the other plastic layer. I'm not sure this is going to actually stop anything at that point, but it's got this additional layer too. I used to run EMS and they made us wear these orange vests. And I, yeah, I was, I've been there for a, for a lot of years and they, uh, long before the orange vests came along, and they started making us wear orange vests. And I was like, you know, I mean, they made us wear them whenever we were out on the interstate on a wreck, which is fine. I get the point. But I, used to say, you know, if they run through all of those police cars, the two fire trucks that are protecting us, and they still get to me, my little orange vest is not going to save me. <laughs> that was a little sarcastic. Anyhow, back to the cluster. There you go. All fixed. Prindle's nice and bright. Odometer's nice and bright. Everything's working. Turn signal lights are good. Um... Let's turn the light off here. These white gauges are harder to see that your lighting's working. Well, we knew it is. No, it is because it was working when we had it all apart. Shouldn't be anything changed. That's it. That's how you fix the Chevy cluster. And looking good as new. So, if you got a moment, please like and subscribe. Helps me out a lot. I appreciate you guys. And I'll keep putting them out. See you on the next one.